Folks, I've had a little something on my mind. I didn't know if I needed to make the video or not, but it seemed like I had a lot of questions about it. Yeah, G-Man, I've heard a little of what you have to say, and I've got some questions for you, too. I had somebody ask me a Toyota series again this weekend. Said, hey, man, I heard you and Trey McKinney got into it. Now, we, we, we didn't get into it. Well, you didn't get into it with him? Well, see, everyone has a little bit different of a definition of that, and, well, we'll get to that. This latest bass controversy started back on the St. John's out of Palaka. Well, what happened is Trey McKinney accidentally ran a no-wake zone. It wasn't one that was marked. It wasn't one that was state law. It was one that bass had put forth in their rules. Does it make it any less of a term of violation? No, it doesn't. Well, until the last couple of days, we didn't know who protested him. Now we know. It was G-Man. Upon receiving the protest, Bass officials deemed that Trey McKinney needed to sit out for 90 minutes the following day. You might say, well, that's not much. It's only an hour and a half. Yeah, you're right. But considering the long drive he had to get to where his fish were, do his fishing and get back, it was going to only leave him with two, two and a half hours left to fish. So, yeah. It put a grip in his style. It's not marked by the state, but it's always been a no wake in every tournament we've ever fished there. Now, do I believe this has been a no wake zone established by bass for purposes of their tournaments for the last several years? Absolutely. I also know this is Trey McKinney's first year. He doesn't have the luxury of some experience like the other guys do. Now, does that make him exempt to the rules? Absolutely not. I'm not saying that. Shut down, the guy ran right through the no wake. My, my marshal asked me, he said, who was that? Trey McKinney. So I fished on it all day. Come so you fished on it all day? Hey, you hear that phone ringing? I think that's Freud. When I weighed in, I have to sign the other side of the slip. When you come off the Bassmaster stage, you sign it, which says you either did nothing wrong or you see nothing wrong. Exactly. The same as in the Andrew Upshaw situation with Brian New, he has to sign that weigh slip saying whether he's either witnessed a violation or committed one himself. So I absolutely agree with G. If you're going to sign that dotted line, you have to do so with a clear conscience. I see Trey McKinney. He's doing an interview with uh, Dan O'Sullivan. Now, for those of you who don't know, Dan O'Sullivan is a media contributor with Bass. If you spent any time at all around the media folks with Bass, you would have run into him, I guarantee you. I've seen him at Fork at the Classic. He's always around interviewing somebody. He's a really good cat, true professional. And the way I like to do things is man to man. Handling things man to man is a very respectful way to do it. I appreciate that. But doing it in front of a reporter, a member of the media right there, kind of calling somebody out, man, that's like your mom at the family reunion telling everybody how small your junk is. I'm going to tell you what I've seen, and I'm going to give you a chance to handle your business with the tournament director and go on with it. And that, See, that's what we call respect man to man. That's how you handle your business. So I see Trey standing there, and I go with him to Dan O'Sullivan, and I'm like, hey, Trey, seen you run the, the no wake zone at the bridge. He said it doesn't have a sign on it. And I'm like, uh, maybe we have a problem now because that means you didn't watch the meeting that we've sent him through video. Maybe we have a problem now. Really? That's what you're going to go with? So you walk up man to man on a 19 year old kid in front of a member of the media, call him out, blindside him, and then you get pissy that he doesn't just believe the first guy's word who walks up to him. Dude, it sounds like you've got some problems that require a bottle of gold bond powder and a box fan. And I said, so with that being said, I said, I've got to go talk to her. It, 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 you know, I'm like waiting the whole time for him to say, hey, I'll take care of it. I did it. But he didn't. I said, so you kind of put me in this position that I have to go do this. And I'll say it again. The kid turned 19 not two months ago. Whether you were trying to intimidate him or not, you probably did. He sticks his hand out to shake my hand, and he goes, well, good for you. You just walked up and intimidated a rookie kid in front of a reporter. Remember earlier when you said you didn't get into it with anybody? Well, this is the definition of getting into it with somebody. All because you couldn't wait a minute. You know who did wait a minute? Your fish. Matter of fact, they took a minute to go upstream and jump in Trey McKinney's boat. Because even after his 90-minute penalty and all the crap he had to come back from, he still finished the tournament in 17th place, and you finished... Well, good for me what? Well, good for me what? That you, you put me in this position? That you did that in front of me? 
and you're going to make me stay up at night writing a protest. I've never wrote one in 25 years because most of the people, when you go tell them what they did, they'll take care of it. You're right, G. Most other guys would have handled it differently. And most other guys have an S-ton more experience than the kid has. I don't disagree that he broke a rule. I don't disagree that punishment's warranted. Not at all. What I disagree with is the hypocritical kind of righteous indignation you have and how you treat the situation. You couldn't give a moment for the kid to clear away from their porter and go up and instead of handling it the way you did, use it as a teaching experience. Mentor him. Help foster that younger generation. What the hell's so wrong with that? Especially coming from somebody who's had a DQ or so himself and along with your nephew. And you want to talk about boat safety, brother. I don't give a damn if there's not a no-way zone when you're crossing between a couple of boats at a high rate of speed, but ding, 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 ring a bell. See, instead of trying to take some time to get to know the kid, you made a few assumptions. You know, I happen to know that he had a pretty decent opinion of you before the situation. Do you know how I know? Well, we played a little game of word association on Lake Fork. I used your name as one of the word association topics. Let's roll that beautiful bean footage. G-Man. I like him. He's funny. He, he, he's a real funny guy. Entertain. I absolutely believe in the premise of what G-Man says he was trying to get across. As far as handling the situation in a man-to-man -man manner, of course, if you get that opportunity, you go to the other person, give them a chance to fall on their sword to the tournament director, easy peasy taken care of. Where he failed in this situation, though, is tailoring his presentation to his audience. This isn't one of his buddies at the KOA. This is a 19-year-old kid. He needs to think about that. Instead, he made him defensive, put him on his heels, and then he was surprised he got less than a desirable response. Who knew? What I'm getting sick and tired of is all these older guys trashing the kids, saying they're disrespectful punk kids. Not a one of these idiots has ever taken five seconds of talking to them. You know how I know Trey McKinney's a respectful kid? Let's just count how many times he called me sir in an interview that was less than five minutes long. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. And if you were counting, that was four sirs in five minutes. Yep. I think the kid's plenty respectful. He just did not understand where Swindle was coming from. Now, what Trey McKinney did do is he went to his social media accounts and made a couple of posts. He fell on a sword, said, yep, I screwed up. I didn't pay attention. He even stressed the importance of paying closer attention to the rules and not just skim through them. He said that's where he screwed up and that he wasn't going to be doing that again. You know what? There was no talk of protesting or appealing or lawsuits. How many grown adults have we heard that BS out of? <coughs> Sheffield. <coughs> Poche. <coughs> Sorry. Cough. Anyway, the kid's more mature than some adults we've covered on this channel. Well, everyone, I think that's going to do it for today's episode. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here, and I want to apologize for the crappy acoustics. What you're seeing behind me is going to hopefully eventually be my new studio, but we've got a long ways to go, as you can see. Thank you so much for being here. Until next time we meet, get out there on the water, be nicer to the younger generation, and keep it wet.